energy. It's part of the rich heritage of Trinidad and Tobago, deeply rooted in the hearts and souls of our people. The power, prosperity and progress that this young nation has enjoyed over the years is due in part to this vital element and the pioneers over the last hundred years who made it happen. It is one of the key reasons why Trinidad and Tobago has shot to prominence in the global energy industry. A key period in our petroleum history took place after the Second World War, as our oil industry embarked on renewed exploration to replenish depleted reserves. In 1954, focus shifted from land to sea when Trinmar commenced marine drilling in the Soldado field off the west coast. This was the same year that the deepest land well was drilled to 16,155 feet, well number 568 Apex Pfizerbad. The first offshore platform erected in 1958, two miles off Brighton with its record-breaking 36 wells, was the watershed marking the start of marine production. Natural gas also began to make its mark in the burgeoning energy sector. In 1953, the Penal Power Station began using gas for power production. And in 1955, the Dominion Oil Company made the first discovery of non-associated gas reserves at Mahaika. By 1959, Federation Chemicals was pioneering the use of gas for petrochemical production. The oil industry's dominance by foreign companies declined with independence in 1962 when the Ministry of Petroleum and Mines was established. Eugene Bertrand, a research chemist and petroleum engineer, was among those at the formation of the Ministry of Petroleum and Mines when the country became independent and was taken strategic control of the energy sector. The 1963 Mustafi Commission of Inquiry into the oil industry signaled Dr. Eric Williams's intention to capitalize on the opportunity Black Gold offered to industrialize the newly independent nation. Doddridge Allen was one of the outstanding civil servants in this country. He played an important role in many areas. He went to the Middle East with a delegation in respect of the energy sector. Iraq was the country which had previously objected to Trinidad and Tobago. So it was, in a sense, most important that we talk to Iraq and clear the way with Iraq. If we were hoping to do what the Prime Minister sent us to do, that is, to, to get us into OPEC. The era of renewed exploration provided a platform for rapid expansion, as new oil and gas fields were located both on and offshore. In 1968, Amico made the first commercial discovery of gas off the East Coast, and a North Coast seismic survey the same year identified further gas fields. The following year, Amoco made more discoveries off the East Coast, and their 1973 discovery of the Cassia Field provided a major gas source. My involvement in the energy sector would have been in the decade of the 70s, because it was during that period that I was Minister of Industry and Commerce and Minister of Petroleum and Mines and Minister of Energy. So that is the period in which I was involved. And in fact, that is the period in which a lot happened. Um, you remember at that time, we had just, in 1963 to 69, we had the third five-year plan. And that third five-year plan spoke about the government taking over the commanding heights of the economy. And the commanding heights of the economy, in those days, defined as the petroleum or energy sector. So that decade was a very uh, important one for us. I was able to participate in the, in the policy of the government aimed at the transformation of the economy and using our energy resources to, to promote the social, economic and industrial development of Trinidad and Tobago. Local expertise replaced expat input 
developing intellectual as well as economic capital. Norwad started in the energy industry in the mid-50s. It's also worth noting that he was, uh, at the time he was taken on by Shell, he was the only human resource manager throughout the world who was black. He ensured that people throughout the company and throughout the industry eventually got the kind of training that they needed so that they could go anywhere in the world. When government purchased Shell's interest in 1974, Trintoc, the first wholly owned state-owned company, came on stream. As the first managing director of Trintoc, my focus initially was on increasing crude oil production and increasing the profitability of the company. In terms of increasing crude oil production, we focused on drilling and workovers and some secondary recovery. The level of production we took over from Shell was at 6,700 barrels per day and declining. We were able to reverse that decline and by 1982 we are at a level of 7,700 barrels per day. Between 1974 and 1984, the company accumulated net profits after tax amounting to 840 million TT dollars. This is after taxes being paid to the extent of 1,770 million TT dollars. After the assignment of the Shell domestic market into NP, uh, I was charged with taking four graduates to form um, the International Marketing Division of uh, Quintoc and take great pride in the fact that we are able to establish uh, Trinidad's reputation in the international petroleum marketing arena. State control of the oil industry took a giant leap forward in 1974 with the Petroleum Taxes Act. With the advent of OPEC in the early 70s, they changed the basis of taxation for petroleum companies in their respective countries. And we then decided that it was time that Trinidad and Tobago got a fair share of the petroleum revenues as well. And we modified our taxation system in order to be able to do that. As a result of which, we were able to increase the revenues progressively over the years. Following the largest scale production of natural gas in the teak field in the early 70s and galvanized by Dr. Eric Williams's exhortation to utilize gas to kick-starting downstream industries, the National Gas Company in 1975 was given the mandate to monetize what had previously been considered as waste. By 1977, gas-based downstream industry came on stream at Point Lisas. With the commissioning of the Iron and Steel Company of Trinidad and Tobago in 1980, the same year that the National Energy Commission came into being, the first totally government-owned non-petrochemical industry was born, bestowing the young nation with a buoyant economy, an ever-improving standard of living, and an ever-progressing society. Our infrastructure, our roadways, our buildings, and our education system has been made possible because of energy and the pioneers who made it a reality.